here today with my guest, Rabbi Don Gross, the rabbi and founder of Congregation Bet David, America's first vegan shul. How are you today, Rabbi? Very well, thank you, Jack. Glad to hear it. So let's get right into it. Tell me about Bet David. Why Bet David? Beit David was started three years ago, and it was a culmination of many years of consideration what do people want when they go to shul. And what we've done is we've taken the best aspects of some of the, the shuls in the metropolitan area, and we've woven them together to create a very unique environment of, of life and excitement where people can experience and experiment on their spirituality. So it's almost like a spiritual playground at Beit David. Okay, and why veganism? So veganism is very important uh, for a healthy life based on many, many studies that have been done. And we believe at Beit David that a healthy spiritual life needs to be integrated with a healthy physical life. Because if you're worried about your doctor calling you, you're not gonna really have a lot of time to, to, to dedicate to God. So uh, having this perfect integration of, of physical and spiritual health is the idea that we promote. And what does somebody say, uh, I'm attending services at Bet David, what can I expect in my, uh, when I come to Bet David? Right, so Bet David is perfect for experienced people, people who have been going to shul for their entire life. <clears throat> and it's also designed for people who are coming for the first time. We are a traditional shul, but what we've done is we've woven in certain aspects to um, give people what we call hooks and handles that they can feel ownership onto the davening. You know, davening can be a very solitary and a somewhat morose uh, experience. Um, and what we try to do is spice it up, give people ideas to think about, uh, choose a word to meditate upon. Sometimes we play games, find the word in, in the prayers, scream it out. Uh, something to, to give people an in to this very uh, 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 difficult to penetrate um, text. And so what we try to do is really spice up the davening. So what people who are experienced will find is they'll see new insights, new ideas, new ways of viewing or singing the prayers. Okay. And uh, so it really breathes new life in for those people who have been going to shul for a long time, and it makes it a great experience for people who are just beginning. And what about yourself, Rabbi? Tell us a little bit about your background, your history, how you came to start at Dovid. Right, I grew up in Staten Island, New York, and when I was bar mitzvahed, the shul had moved away. So every week we had the shul, which I often times would call around to collect the, the, the quorum. Um, we had it in my house. So I'm very familiar with this small shul idea. And also being central to the, the running of the program. Uh, I went to yeshivas my whole life, day schools. And then when I was 20, I went to uh, seminary. I, I learned in B'nai Brak for two and a half years and in Jerusalem for the next year and a half. Th thereupon, I came back to YU, finished up my degree. Also studied in cantorial school for three and a half years under Cantor's beer and Cantor Joseph Malavani. And I was in martial arts school for five years also at the time. <laughs> so um, the genesis of, of Beit David was seeing a need that really needed to be filled where people were getting to a certain level in their Judaism and then sort of just staying there. It's almost like people getting to eighth grade and staying there. They didn't know that, that high school was available to them. So we sort of see ourselves as the next step in people's development. And is Beit David or does Beit David offer types of learning uh, classes and different uh, you know, learning times during services. I know you said you, you pick out certain areas and things and you focus on those right. for people to learn. Um, can you give us a little more information about what? Yes, so, so on Shabbat, that is an optimal learning time because you're dealing with the Torah. Uh, and, and as I described to you before, uh, if a person was sightseeing and they passed by the Empire State Building or the, uh, the Statue of Liberty, surely the, the, the tour guide would you know, make an announcement, hey, look to the right, there we are. 
So when we come to an important part in the Torah, whether it's Moshe breaking the, the tablets or the water splitting or uh, some other very famous portion, we're certainly going to point that out. Anytime there's a, a, a point of learning that we can offer to the people, that's what we'll do. It. Uh, Wednesday nights also is, uh, for the last two years, we've been running the Torah 360 class. What and that's, is that? That is um, a, a weekly Parsha study with Kabbalah, with practical, with uh, classical uh, understandings and interpretations of the Torah. So it really gives people's, people tools with which to live their life in a more spiritual way. And are there any other classes? I know in the past you've mentioned about classes with cooking in a vegan way and yes. things like that. Yes, Those veganism being as important as it is, uh, people want to know how to cook that way. It seems to be you know, this, uh, this mystical idea that they don't know how to do. Ally, al along with uh, talking about the foods that they're eating during the Kiddush, because the Kiddush is an opportunity for people to see vegan food, to taste vegan food, to literally sink their teeth into it. Uh, we've also had uh, a series of cooking classes where people come and what we do is we, we give them the list of ingredients, we cook together, and then we sit down and we eat hmm. over some wine. Very <laughs> interesting. Been very nice. Very nice way to do that. Now, what about, what would I see, say I was a first time attendee at, at David, what would I see, how would it differ or how would it be the same to my normal Shabbos service or how would I serve? Right, so as I say, we're a traditional shul. There is a mechitza here, but I call it a Caldwell mechitza. Um, you know, it's not a, uh, an iron wall. It's, it's a, you don't need a passport to, 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 you know, with papers to be, you know, go from one side to another, but it is a separation. Um, what people will find is a very traditional service, but with a lot of energy, where their personal energy contributes to the whole. Um, yeah, it's it's sometimes the experience has to be experienced to because it's visceral. But uh, those are the components. Another very important aspect of Beit David is the only rule we have to entering is to check your ego. If you came with one, leave it outside. We, that's, that's the only rule here. And because of that, we're all able to, there's an, it's an environment of non-judgment where we can all uh, accept one another wherever we are in our, not, you know, in, our, in our growth, in our spiritual path, and to come together to create a unified energy. Is there anything that I've asked you that you'd like to expound upon or something, maybe a question I didn't ask you that perhaps you feel should be answered for somebody who might be interested in Bet David? Yes, uh, actually two things. Bet David is so needed today because it, there is a need, there is a, 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 a search for spirituality. And virtually every store on the block you can find, you know, a Palm Reader or, a, or a, you know, a, some other spiritualist looking to give, um, 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 you know, fulfill, fulfill the need that the person has. Jews also have that need, and that need can be fulfilled in shul. The other aspect I wanted to talk about is yes. women. And it's very important, you know, the role of women in shul, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a very popular topic today, and it's a very important one. Although we don't count women in the minion, we count on them, and that's not just lip service. We count on them vocalizing, participating, being there, adding their uh, comments uh, to the learning segments of, of, of the, the, the Shabbat service. And they're a very, very significant portion and component of our show. And lastly, how would somebody get in touch with you or find out about services? Is there some central point that does? Uh, well, we don't have a website yet, but we do have a Facebook page. It's Beit David and uh, Rabbi Don Gross at gmail.com. And that, that's the best way to contact you. Yes. And what about uh, for services? How is that also the Gmail account and also the Facebook page, or is there? Well, yeah, well, we we have an email list, and emails go out um, every week for the Shabbat announcements, 
and that's how we stay in touch with all of our constituents. Okay, thank you very much, Rabbi Gross. My pleasure. pleasure I look forward you. to seeing you at Beit David. <laughs>